Hello everybody and welcome back to the Whoops Approach. My name is Spaceman Spiff and today I know I told you guys we were going to build a catapult together. And I'm a big fat liar. I'm sorry you guys. I kind of, I even filmed it, but it, it was about an hour and a half of ultimate failure. Um, I can't tell you how long it took me to build these two guys <laughs> and how many times I had to revert saves over and over and over again. I lost the counterweight over and over again. The thing would bug and fall apart every time. I was... Ugh, what a pain. Anyway, I kind of, instead of building one with you guys, I was just going to go over this one. And I I know it's not perfect. It's not even close to what a trebuchet is supposed to be perfect. But I kind of wanted to go over it because I did some research after I built these two. And before I wanted to build one with you guys to, to see the exact, how how you're exactly supposed to build a trebuchet. Um, not perfectly, but within the specifications to make it work correctly. Now, these might work, but they might not. And that's a lot of lumber and weight to waste on a mite. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to besieging castles and stuff. So I kind of want to take you guys over over how a trebuchet functions. And so you guys can kind of base your your builds off of the, the, the true, I wouldn't say mathematics, but the true mechanics of the way a trebuchet works. Now, let's start off with the top part here. We, we, we'll, this is the base. I mean, the, the frame of the trebuchet. Uh, it's very basic. You can get very basic or very complex with it. It doesn't really matter too much as long as it holds the weight up and doesn't jiggle apart. When it comes to the, the beam here, the throwing arm beam and the counterweight arm beam, you... Okay, so a trebuchet works by transferring the falling energy of the counterweight and transferring it into the projectile at the end of the, the throwing arm. Um, the, the counterweight pivots around a shorter distance uh, than the payload and giving the payload end a higher linear, linear velocity, but it also makes it so you have to add an entire buttload of weight over here. Uh, we'll kind of get into that in a minute. Um, upon firing, so imagine this this beam is drawn back, and the, the projectile is attached to it. As this counterweight falls from here down, this arm swings up and over, releasing all that energy, or transferring all that energy from the falling weight through the arm and into the projectile. Now, as the projectile runs along its chute, it picks up, um, oh, what's it called? There's a word for it, a type of, uh, let's see, linear velocity, but I, I think that's wrong. Anyway, it picks up speed, DTD, it picks up a whole lot of speed until it's actually traveling faster than the, the arm itself. Now, on a real trebuchet in real life, you know, kind of fly up here, you know, we've got these things you just kind of hook hook the rope onto. In real life there's actually a little bar here and then some rope, a net to keep the projectile in, and some rope to come all the way back up here and a little ring to hook on that that um, hook or the little metal piece protruding. And I did some research on it and it said about a 45 degree angle is what you want this arm to be from the weight, if that makes any sense. So about the time it releases, it should be kind of cockeyed from where that one is. You know, not not straight up and down like this, but kind of cockeyed. That's about the time you want the, the weight to release so it gets the highest, or the, the most amount of height and distance out of your shot. <clears throat> now, I the article I read, um, they referenced Donald B. Ciano, I hope I'm saying that right, who wrote a book on trebuchets, um, on their mechanics and how to get the best out of out of your trebuchet? You know, he he kind of gave like three or four little guidelines on how to build a trebuchet. And I, I really liked how he he put it, so I was going to kind of go over with him. The release point should be on the counterweight arm is at 45 with the vertical, uh, which is what I was just telling you now. That should be at a vertical 45 degrees. Um, from the counterweight. And number two, the length of the payload arm beam should be 3.75 times the length of the counterweight arm. 
So this is the counterweight arm, and I didn't I haven't measured it out. I guess we could. Uh, roughly 10. So 3.7 would be 10, 20, 30. So it'd only be about right here, and I've got it completely way out there. So I, I mean, this is technically built wrong. I could have built a much tinier one, or that back back arm beam could have been a whole lot longer. So, which is why it's rule number two. The, the rule number three, and it was another reason I've screwed up on this build, is that the the length of the sling, which means the length of the rope connecting the beam to the projectile, should be the exact same length of the beam itself. So if I if I built this correctly, this beam or this this shoot here for the projectile should be as long as that beam. Right? So they both should be 3.7 times longer than that beam connecting to the counterweight. Um, his last recommendation or pinpoint thing is that you use a counterweight 100 times heavier than the, the weight of the projectile you were throwing. He said uh, you can achieve some better s stuff with less weight or roughly around the same weight of 100 times and you can fluctuate depending on how you want to manufacture your trebuchet but he was saying that a hundred times is the, the limit you really need to go to you don't really need to go over a hundred times and that's just because um, what I understood from him saying is that um, no matter how much uh, mass an item has it'll everything will fall at the same rate and so at a certain point you're using too much mass for the the amount or the rate that something can fall or that gravity can can pull it down. <clears throat> and there's like a speed of sound, speed of light, and I guess a speed of falling, no matter what <laughs> what the density of or how much mass something has. So adding way too much weight is just kind of pointless after a while because you've just got too much mass, and it the the speed of a falling object will is limited to a certain point, and that's why he said only a hundred times. Now I I, I kind of just I kind of just wanted to take you guys over this stuff real quick and show you why my trebuchets weren't built so nicely. It's unfortunate that since they patched it now on the 19th, um, these don't work. These don't work right now. Uh, hopefully, nope, none of them work. Oh no, that one works. Why doesn't this one work? Do they just? Nope. That's just weird. Okay. Well, anyway, I just wanted to show you guys and tell you guys exactly how a trebuchet's mechanics are supposed to work. Uh, I hope you found this helpful or informative in any sort of way when it comes to building your trebuchets. Um, another thing I found interesting while doing my research on trebuchets is there are two different types of catapults. I'm just going to throw this in at the very end. There's a tension and torsion type of catapult. Now, a tension catapult almost similarly looks like this. But instead of the, the arms coming out, there would be a straight arm. Ah, that's the best way to put it. There'd be a straight arm coming out, and then about halfway out, they would use material that would would flex. Uh, so it, it kind of looked like a big old crossbow over there to a degree. <clears throat> but instead of uh, using the tension to draw back a bow, it was to draw back the beam. <clears throat> so you'd, you'd wrench down this putting tension on these beams across and then releasing it but um, those beams would wear pretty quickly in battle uh, back in the day and so they weren't as useful and not nearly as accurate and then the the torsion which is this which we have got a torsion rope or I'm sorry which is this which is a torsion rope uh, oh god I'm stuck I'm stuck okay now these were a bit more effective, but these materials would also still wear out after a few uses. So I, I just kind of wanted to go over those two, and I know I promised you guys I'd work on that, but I haven't touched it. <laughs> I apologize. But I kind of wanted to go over, go over it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, hit that like button. If you want some more, hit that subscribe button, because I'll definitely be putting out some more here soon. Alright, y'all guys have a great day. I'll catch you in the next video.